Hi there, I'm Evan. And I'm Mark. And on this week's episode, we talk about... All the crap in Mark's life. And why Evan is the starter of everything. Wow, okay. I don't remember that. <laughs> and uh, how Mark first met me. Yes, at the very end. That. So you got to go, you got to listen to the whole thing to see how Mark first met me. Mm-hmm. It's a story he remembers that I don't. Ding dong, I'm here. All right. Well, I was here. You weren't here. So I was like, okay, bathroom break, 50 squats. No, get no, back I got in, in. I Let's got in go. 229, 229, and you weren't here. You know why I know that? Because I was like making myself a pot of tea. That looks like the, the pot from the from the uh, Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got this. Is a it's wedding totally gift. the pot. Mrs. Potts, isn't it? This is a wedding gift my wife and I got. It has no top because that got broken 10 years ago. But. Uh, wow, you've been yeah, there I was for a long time. A pot of tea. Okay. And I was like, come on, water boy, 11. It's going to freak out if I'm late. And I didn't want to have to wait an hour for my tea. So. All right. Well, we're here. Here. Something to brew podcast. Here. Time to crush we it. Are. Right. Okay. I season like how, three. I like how you move. It's season three. I like how you move the microphone for Do the you? podcast. Is it better? No. Because now really? you breathe into it more and you got more popping sounds. No, no. You hear popping? Well, when you breathe into it. So I put Nina's sock on top of it. This is a so, cover of Nina's so, sock. So the problem is right now is, is you're, you're talking into the microphone this yeah. way yeah. when the yeah. microphone should be either this way or on an angle. So that way your breath is going, isn't going into it oh. past it. Well, no, I just need a, I need a better, I have the big one, the, the like sock? professional. Yeah. yeah. But, but it just takes up so much visual space that for video, it sucks. Yeah. So I just put Nina's sock on top of it. See, every time you said put, you just said put, and I heard, yeah. I heard the pee pop. Yeah. No, it's not good. It's, I it's had not it as good as it was before when it was just above your head. <laughs> but it sounds better, right? The quality is better. No? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we are. So guess what, Evan? Chicken Jack- butt. Chicken butt. <laughs> wow. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that takes me back to when my kids were like three or four, and they loved that. <laughs> I still love it. Guess what, Evan? Chicken not butt. Chicken butt. Not chicken butt. The other day, uh, Jacqueline and I- Did her our, first our, live. Our, we did our first live last night. We didn't realize we were competing against you till someone told us, hey, I just left Evan's live stream to come to yours. Wow. Like, oh, wow. 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 Okay. But, but no, guess, guess what? Um, our, our gym closed. Uh, mm-hmm. And so the other day, Jacqueline and I decided we're going to go out for a run outside. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we go for a run. It's like 41 minutes or something. And I run faster than her. So I'm like, I like kind of ran a little bit slower so she could keep up and stuff. But okay. when we finished, I said, I don't know how much we ran. And she looked at her app. She's like nine kilometers, a little mm. over nine kilometers. I'm like, wow, we never run that far. Did we talk and about this already? Maybe part one. I've heard this story. This okay. is not part two. So part, oh, what's one part two. Is, part one is we never run that far. It's right. crazy. And I was like, I have so much energy left. I'm like, I like, I was doing sprints and everything. I was like, okay. I was nine kilometers. Anyway, I added it all up. We ran 5.2 kilometers. Oh, For, okay. I was totally wrong. I went oh. on GPS, pinpointed our run. It was like 5.2 kilometers. Wow. Okay. So I was like, we both felt great because we thought we did a 10K and, okay. and we didn't. You did half so, of a 10K? Yeah, but that's nothing. We do that all the time. Like okay. fr- running 5K is like, I do that like four or five times a week. So all right. but listen, I've, never, I've never run a 10K before. So okay. yesterday I plotted out, well, what would it take for me to run a 10K? Okay. We live 200 meters from a, a trail, like just really close to a trail. So what would it mm-hmm. take? How far would I have to go? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, Did you do one, it? At 109 this afternoon, I left the house and I ran a 10K. Nice. Uh, I did How it do you feel? An hour ago. I feel great. I did it in 55 minutes and 20 seconds. I don't know if that's good or if that's bad because uh, I can run. It's great because you've never done it before. Exactly. And my legs, I did lots of stretching. That's why I have my T now. My legs are really sore. You could have done 15. Uh, (laughs) I could have if I just kept going. But let me tell you, um, go. yeah, that extra five kilometers doubling it was, uh, yeah, it was more difficult. It was more difficult. It was more challenging. But at the same time, I felt so much gratitude because we live like so close to all these trails, like, mm. like walking trails, running trails. 
and everybody's out and they're all like bundled up, like they're all bundled up and they're cold and they look miserable. And I'm running in shorts and a t-shirt and, and I'm the only person running. I'm the only person exercising. I'm crushing it. I'm, I'm feeling so good. And I'm just like, I am going to do this. I, first of all, I have to do it and get back in time for, for, for the podcast. That's for sure. So that gave me like an hour and 21 minutes, but yeah. Otherwise then, it's a solo show. Then when I realized I was going to do it in less than an hour, I was like, okay, how fast can we go? So yeah. Anyway. I, I'm proud of myself for one, feeling super proud of thinking I did a 10K. And then when realizing I didn't do a 10K, challenging myself to actually- That's how we do. Drake are standing <laughs> up, friends. <laughs> Welcome to season three. Yeah, I couldn't, take, I couldn't take credit. I just, inside it, it bothered me for the last two days that people think, because she put on social media that we did a 10K, so I had to go out and run it then. I remember yeah. seeing that. Yeah, I commented on it. I, I, I liked it. Yeah. Turned out okay. it was only a 5K. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, that's, that's my update. Other than the fact that like I, I'm now doing the Evan schedule cause I work from home. So I get up a little bit before five by five fifteen. I'm working. I work until like five or 6 PM. So it's Is like that 12 the Evan hours, schedule? That's not 12 the Evan hours schedule. of nonstop working from home. Oh, I see. Okay. No, no breakfast, no breaks, oh, yeah. no, yeah, no, yeah. uh, lunch. This, I just did my break. This, yeah, you, you, there you go. This, this run was like my break for the day. That's the best dude. It's so good. It did feel good. It did feel good, you know. So here's here's the thing, right? So obviously everyone is mourning loss. Some people are seeing opportunity, but most people are kind of freaking out about loss and about change and about what will we do. But wait, they're not mourning. Who's mourning? That's not the Yeah, people are in mourning. They're in mourning of the life that they had that last week that's no longer safe and secure. And and they're in they're like they're, there's there's uh. part of what their anxiety is about is they're actually mourning the loss of of what they had. Okay, maybe. Okay, keep going. That's fine. Well, what I was saying though is I think not, I'm trying to lean into the opportunity to overcome any kind of fear. Yes. Yep. And the other thing I'm leaning into is I want to see how little we actually need because oh, I don't okay. think, I, I don't think I need all, I don't think we need all the things that we had. That's a good challenge. Right. So I love the fact that, you know, like I have a diesel pickup truck. I love my pickup truck. I love driving my truck. I love the fact it's diesel but I filled it up on Friday and I haven't driven it in like seven days, six days. Okay. Just sat there in the parking lot. Part of me the other day was like, I wonder if I can cancel my car insurance. Okay. Like, I'm not driving it. Why not? Do you we can, need my can, office? Listen, do I need my $60,000 a year offices? I don't know if I do. You, you know, can, like, well, you can, you can apply for a farm vehicle <laughs> and you get lower insurance. I've, no, I, I mean, yes, I know you do, but you can't drive on 400 series highways. And technically we don't have an agricultural property already looked into it. It's pretty close. He's in the middle of nowhere. There's cows. Okay. There's cows. <laughs> Inside joke. Inside joke. There's no cows around. But uh, yeah, like just like do we, you know, I was saying to Jacqueline, uh, I think this is going to teach us that we don't need most of the things that we thought we need. I love it. It's great. Yeah. I know that or at, a, at a certain point in your life earlier, you in your life, maybe what, five or six years ago, you went like super minimalistic, right? You yeah. had, you had the house, you had a custom built home. You had, oh. you know, 5,000 square feet. You had, yeah. you know, your business and uh, you know, there was another business with, with TDS and um, like you guys, you, you guys had stuff. And then there was a point where you were yeah, sleeping, but, what on the floor on, on like a tiny mattress with nothing. You, oh, you decided okay, you're going to go to Hong Kong on your honeymoon and you want to pack everything into a single tiny little backpack, yeah, right? You went minimalistic, didn't you? Okay. But the, you went to my old house, right? Or no? Yeah, I've been to your old house. Yeah. What was in that house? Like nothing. <laughs> it's pretty minimalistic, just minimalistic in a very big way. Uh, uh, but the townhouse you had before that wasn't that minimalistic. I mean, it was had some art on the walls, and it had some. You had your white chairs, and but I mean, you had white sofas and stuff. It was yeah, you have a modern, yeah. clean design sense. But it's always been modern, clean. I guess it's evolved definitely from the townhome. That uh, now you're going way back to the townhome. <laughs> This is the benefit of knowing you for like 13 years. Right. I have a memory that can go back pretty far. <laughs> uh, I've never been a heavy traveler. I, I did go crazy for a while uh, where I would, I would bring like for two weeks, three shirts and just keep washing them. Yeah. To see how much could I do. Uh, I, yeah, I guess it was a mo There's a phase. I mean, it still degrees though, because I've already been pretty minimalistic. Um, so it's not going from like hoarding and having rooms full of junk to now I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Uh, I looked into the ex officio, uh, 
you know, underwear and all the stuff that what like, is that? Oh, ex officio ex officio underwear is the, is, is one at, uh, super, super quick dry. Also like at the time when this stuff didn't exist, super quick dry, uh, anti, anti odor and anti and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. It is like, you can go it's for like a month. Basically this shirt. <laughs> But you, you go for a month with two pairs of underwear. Like that's the nice. idea. I like yeah. that. And 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 so and then they branched out into t-shirts and and other other things. So I I bought that stuff. Uh, and whenever I traveled, I tried to go as light as possible. Even now, I don't go more in the backpack. I'm like it's a backpack. It's whatever it is fits in my backpack. That's what I take. Yeah, yeah. If anyone ever gets the luxury of traveling with Evan, do not dare to try and check a bag. Oh my gosh, we are <laughs> not checking back, and that's part of it too. It's like the check in the bag, the waiting process, of the every single time. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy it. though, because you fly business class where you're allowed to check up to two bags, but you refuse to check any. Yeah, because you still have to wait. Business class is. I know. You get to wait, dude. I don't like to check class. bags either. Never, never check no, no, bags. No. no. Yeah, if it's if it's if it's for a month, I'm not checking a bag. Okay, okay, I've, I I wouldn't go that far. I like driving to places. When we went to Boston uh, for for um, Louis and I for uh, inbound, mm -hmm. you know when you travel and then you're like, I, I always like to buy some stuff in the states. Pants are cheaper and other things. I like Target for buying certain brands of pants, but you can't fit very much in your bag because you're not checking any luggage. And then we we were there in my truck, and I was like, oh my, we have my truck. We have my whole truck. I could buy like a TV if I wanted to. I could buy anything and put it in the back. So I got really excited. I still only bought three pairs of pants, but still, All right. I got excited about the possibilities. I feel and then like realized I didn't need any of that stuff. You, you have a banner somewhere that has you at inbound. Yeah. Yeah, we need to fix that. Why? Because you're better than that. I'm better than inbound? Yeah, like inbound. Dude, Jesus Christ. I just like that photo. I just like the photo I because I'm standing, I'm standing in my like... So take another photo with something more inspiring behind you. Well, it's not the photo. That's the photo on my personal uh, Facebook page. It's not the one on my new brand page. My new so, brand page is pretty nice. It's black and white. I'm smiling. It's got copy. It explains who I am. I feel like you still need to make it better. It bothers me every time I see it. Well, then uh, I'll fix it for you, Evan. All right. Thank you. Here's the thing. Anything that bothers Evan means I got to fix it right away. <laughs> it's just not good enough. Because really it bothers you. That's it. It doesn't bother me. I like that photo. It's kind of purple. No, but I look good. It, it bothers you. If it I was standing in front of you, know, what I want, what I want actually, maybe uh, I got to figure out how to get this done. <clears throat> Idea to action. Yeah. I like that photo. I like the location. I wish it said extraordinary behind me. Yeah. So, in so big giant letters. It still, it, it doesn't bother Mark, but it bothers 2022 Mark. <laughs> and that's all I'm, that's all we're doing. <laughs> Evan is a few years ahead of me. But anyway, I wanted to dig into the minimalistic thing, right? So oh, lots okay. of people are talking about opportunities. Lots of people are talking about opportunities, right? I firmly like two, two quick stories. Jacqueline was really struggling yesterday. I think you and I talked a bit about it. And, you know, I was talking to her. She's really struggling because, because she has just spent, we talked about it a bunch of weeks ago, right? She's got plays going on. She's got singing. She's doing a, like, she feels like after all these years, she found her purpose. And then on like a Thursday afternoon, everything, you know, everything gets canceled. Everything goes on hold. Everything gets taken away. She feels like she's going back to being a mom from a few years ago, this or that. So I well, said, she went from being a, a housewife and, and looking after the family and wanting to have a, a dream and a career. And yes. then finally having the strength, courage, gusto to go for it and yes. then getting amazing results. And now it all being ripped away. And it feels like you're going backwards. In a day, everything got canceled and everything yeah, went away. I get and she it. Lost everything. I get it. It I, sucks I, feeling like you go backwards. I totally get it too. Um, but I said, what's stopping you from saying, hey, 11 a.m. tomorrow, meet me in this park. We're all going for a run. And she was like, oh, there's something to that maybe. What about, like, what about this? What about this? What about this? Like, you, you always talk about it, right? Like, just come up with an idea. Take action. That's the opportunity, right? When you feel like you can't do anything, the opportunity is to, is to, what is the idea and take action on it and you'll feel like you're getting control. You feel like you're making progress. So good. Evan taught me this. When That's you fantastic. feel like you can't come up with an idea, then you come up with an idea and you do something. That's great. 
Okay, keep going. You do it, you take action, you feel like you're getting a sense of control. That's amazing. So, so I think a lot of people are talking about that, right? The opportunity, the moment, the feeling of like, I know that we're living in unprecedented times. And while there's a lot of fear and a lot of scared, scaredness, there's a lot of things over here on this other side, we feel like there's opportunity simmering. We're not sure how to take advantage of it. I think the true thing though, like I mentioned is, I think we're gonna wake up to a whole bunch of things that we don't really need. And at the same time, we're gonna realize, wow, that other thing over there was really powerful that helped us get it through, you know? Um, Jack is concerned that the kids aren't going to be able to go back to school till September. I said, yeah. fantastic. So we, legit. we'll find, I said, great. So, so we'll use, uh, we'll use go to meeting or Google hangouts and we'll hire tutors and our kids can do like one or two days of tutoring. Rachel can hire an, an art, um, teacher remotely. Um, we can buy them Kindles and they can download books because we can't go to the library right now. I said, what's the next problem? Give me another problem. I'll fix it for you. <laughs> like, look at like, this. Like there's, there's opportunity in everything, but I don't think we need schools. <laughs> like it doesn't bother me that the kids aren't going to school. That doesn't bother me that they, that they don't go to a class and they don't sit behind a desk for six hours a day while a teacher does like what they can to try and teach 34 students at a time. Right. I think they might have a better year learning what they're about to learn than going and sitting at a school. That's just one of many things that I think that we don't really need to live with that. Okay. That, yeah. What, what, are your, what are your thoughts on the things that are really important and what we might learn from it and how we can scale down and minimalism and all that stuff? Cause you've done it. I haven't. Uh, I think it, I think it's fun. I think it's powerful. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a movement or trend or a bunch of people who are trying to get down to hundred items. So that, mm. that's, that's the thing. So like, how do I have a hundred items? So that means like, like a items bowl per, per person in the household. Cause I got six people. So that's 600 items or even, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's one bowl because a bowl counts as an item and a, and a pair of underwear counts as an item. So like it really forces you to focus on what are you going to keep? Cause buying that new pair of jeans means you have to give up something to be in the hundred. So whether it's a hundred, a person, a hundred, whatever you could play with it because the, I, I like that. The forced, uh, it forces you to be thoughtful about what you're bringing into your life. Mm. Right? I probably own like 3,000 things. <laughs> if yeah. you actually go around my house and my garage and my tools and my this and that and add everything up. So, so for a while I had, uh, I had a bowl and that was my bowl. I had one bowl and one, I didn't actually get rid of my other bowls. I just had one bowl. Like I would only eat from this one bowl. Do you, so do, you know I how I know, do you know how I know that you did this? Because you didn't actually tell me. Oh, okay. You, you went this way. Okay. Louis Trahan, our mutual mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. told me that he was concerned about how minimalistic you were going. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> and I remembered that all these years later. So I had one bowl. And I get, then I made a special bowl. Like if you're going to only have one bowl. It better be Evan's it's a, it's amazing a special bowl. bowl. And then one, and, and then you, you wash it every night. And then... I think about what we do now. Like I've got, I've got, Nina just bought me this coffee and then I had, I had, I had this this morning and then I have my water bottle. Like already in front of me, I've got three different things that hold beverages as opposed to just having one and washing it and cleaning it. You know, it's like, there's, there's some pride in that. So it's such a man uh, thing to do though. Like my wife, if my wife is gone, I will cook every, like I will use one frying pan and one fork and I will make sure that I cook everything in that frying pan in different sections. And then I, I, will, I won't do that. Normally and, like, why? Like if you're doing like some spinach and kale with some butter or whatnot, then you're going to crack the eggs on this side. You'll mix them in. You'll cook some bacon over here. Like I can do well, everything. I, I, on a I don't single cook, skillet, so I don't know. A single okay. skillet with a fork. And then when it cools a little bit, I just eat out of the skillet and I'm so happy because I've used two dishes for the entire meal. <laughs> I don't know if the, I don't know if the, minimalist thing is going to be the lesson that people pull from it. I hope people pull a lesson from it. I hope people first use it as a positive, as a positive, like even how you started at saying most people are living in fear and anxiety and or you use the word mourning. Um, it, it, it's the willingness to see a positive and opportunity in this time. I think the only positive most people are having, maybe not listeners to this show, cause you got something to prove and, thinking big but i think a lot of people are just using it as oh i get i get time off i can working they're working from home but it's super light work they're not actually crushing it from home so they got extra time to do whatever binge watch netflix and panic by watching the news and 
all this stuff. They're in work light mode on top of being stressed out of everything that's happening and worrying about themselves and their family and their kids. And if they have enough toilet paper and, uh, I don't think most people are going to come out of this feeling like they learned anything, but if you're looking for a lesson, then it's whatever the lesson you feel you need most, right? Like, I think for you, the lesson is Mark's a hoarder and needs to get rid of some stuff. You know, like, come on, Mark. The lesson, the lesson for Alex. I'm a, ho- I'm a hoarder and I need to get rid of some stuff. Ho- Mark should be on the show, Hoarders. Man, your son's room before it became his room was a disaster. Or was My it this room? This room was the junk room. This yes. room, before it became this room, was a yes. disaster. And your life is just as good as it was before any of that other junk was in your house you got rid of it and wherever else it's living i didn't get rid of it i built shelves and i organized everything it's all right it's all over there now it's like but you don't need any of that stuff it's not doing anything for you mark mark needs to become more <laughs> minimalistic my garage man it's it's, it's a, your hoarder in, listen if you watch a, season not, three episode two of hoarders you'll see mark drager's garage evan uh-huh. i grew up with a hoarder like a real hoarder a real real hoarder so I may have uh, tendencies towards saving some things, but I'm, not, I'm nowhere near a hoarder. But you're nowhere near where you want to be. Great. So this is your lesson coming out of this. <laughs> when I was growing up, my family bought a, a large farm, a large property. That's when we did live in the country. And there was a, there was a 35,000 square foot shop. 35,000 square feet is like the size of a, of a factory. And at one point it was so full of junk that, that had accidentally fallen over that the doors got blocked and no one could get in. <laughs> That's the extreme version of hoarding that I grew up with. I think whatever people are struggling with right now through this situation is the lesson that you can learn. So if Mark- ah, Hold Mark's, on. So, so, okay, that, that sounds awesome. So my, my, real fear, my, my real fear is recession, bankruptcy, all that stuff. At the same time, I'm just like, oh man, I, like, I, I bounce between being so ultra confident because I know we've got this and I'm learning that future Mark has this. And no matter what happens, we're going to come out so, so strong. Big picture. We're going to come out really, really strong. And then in the micro, I'm like, tough day. So if, so if the lesson is whatever you, you're worried about right now is the thing that you're going to crush. Is that what you said? This is your lesson. Whatever you're worried about the most right now, whatever yes. pain you're going through right now is the yes. thing that you need the most as a lesson to you to get better. Okay. Well, I didn't want you to divert that to hoarding because it's actually not hoarding, but it's, it's, uh, it's worrying. It's worrying that I won't come out of this as strong as, as, as I plan to be. Great. So you should be spending your time, not running 10 kilometers, but working on. Dude, what are you talking about? You know how proud I made myself for running 10 K? No, I like, I like the 10 K, but you should be making yourself proud of the effort you're, you're putting into. You should be off. How do I, how do I get promotion for Fanta? Mm Mm-hmm. What so have been, what have we been working on this week? Positioning, copy. Yeah, but that, that's it. Like whatever you're most afraid of, that needs to be the thing that you're spending all your time on. If you're worried about your, your parents getting coronavirus and-, and You should be spending some, your time helping Yeah, them. like that's a wake up call to say, hey, maybe you're not spending that time with your parents. Mm. For, for Alex, he's struggling, my Alex, he's struggling with staying on this schedule where he can't, now nobody depends on him because he doesn't show up to classes. Like this is your chance to- you have to step up to it. You have to get your 10 out of 10 every day. You got to wake up and, and pound the effort in, even though there's no class to go to. You got to get ahead on all the other projects. So whatever you're feeling the most pain in, that's what you need to be working through so that you can come out stronger. What are you working through right now? I don't really feel a lot of pain, dude. Like this is not, this is easy. This is comfort zone for me. Already, I'm only doing six days a week like six days a week, it's me and my wife. The seventh day is Alex and Jeremy come over, right? And l- unless I'm going to speak at some event and, and it sucks at my events, you know, speaking events and stuff got canceled and one that we were supposed to go to together. Um, but otherwise, it's me in, in my home. My, I work from my home office, me in my home, just <laughs> making content, doing my work. This is great. This is so, in, as an introvert, like I need to be forced to the other stuff to go out and meet people and doing events and stuff is harder. This is normal. This is natural. I don't go out and buy anything anyway. Like I would, I, I am a hermit, dude. I am a hermit. This is easy. 
the, the quarantine is not a big deal. Evan, Evan has been, has been prepping for this for the last eight years, basically. We were, we is on our, I don't, were you on this? I don't think so. No, I was doing one of my League of Legends live streams and uh, people were, somehow we got on the topic of toilet paper and somebody said that they just went out and bought 50 rolls of toilet paper for them and their family of six or something. And then, then Nina overheard and said, oh, we, we have lots of toilet paper too. It's like, how many do we have? It's like, I don't know. I bought it way before the Corona thing even happened. I just always stock up. Like, well, how many do you have? I don't know. Go count. And we had over, a, we already have over a hundred rolls of toilet paper for <laughs> okay, the two so of us before I know Corona even happened. Coming. I know where we're coming because we were getting low on toilet paper before this all happened. And so like last Friday, Jack's like, Mark, we only have eight rolls and we're a family of six. So I'm like, okay, don't worry. It'll restock. I, Yesterday I was like, where are we on the toilet paper roll? She's like, we're still at six. I'm like, it's oh, called good. having a shower guys. You have a shower. No, we, I, uh, I went out uh, and bought baby wipes. It's okay. Great. It's not uh, the end of the world. The point we have, is we have food. I can come we over have, to Evan's house no, and I can come, come over here. with my truck. No. If Mark, over with my if truck, Mark's not willing to show up on my book launch day to do a, a, a live session you're not coming over here with your truck to steal and accost my toilet paper what if i'm coming over with my truck to help you hang lighting in your house because yeah. i love you so much yeah right and i just take some toilet paper with me <laughs> we our lights up anyway this is not a painful moment for me um it it's fairly quiet so i mean it's great i get to get so much work done um so maybe it's just the nature of my business maybe it's just the way that i I think um, if something happens, it's immediately, okay, what can we do? Even TDS. TDS is a massive pain point. TDS, Toronto Dance Salsa, my, my salsa dancing business, is closed, right? No class is happening. But other we than rent, there's no carrying costs then. We can't sell anything. I got to pay Alex and I got I to gotta carry rent. That, no, you don't have to pay Alex. I don't have to pay Alex? Okay, Alex, no. are you going to listen in on this? He's an owner. Right. So Alex is not an owner yet. Okay, so then put him on employment insurance. I still have to pay insurance, right? We yeah. we still insurance have to pay like rent. Yeah, but rent alone is already is already yeah, rent is six figures a month. Uh, not a month. Holy Jesus. Oh, six wow. figures six figures a year. It's five figures yeah. a month, right? Yeah. Already that's that's knocked out. I gotta pay Alex. I gotta I gotta pay for insurance and everything else, right? And that's the business, right? Um whatever. Alex, okay, go. Alex is freaking out, panicking, crying. Like I let people down that we had to close classes. Like, dude, use this time to get ahead. Like it's just a yeah. default mode. Film the videos, film, film. If Mark needs ads, film ads. We film our level one to four so that we can sell it as an online program for people who miss a class, right? Go find more instructors. We need more instructors. Nobody's working right now. Mm -hmm. Go recruit them. We need to get more people onto the team, right? It's just, this is not that big a deal. I mean, I get, just you build from it i don't know something i don't know what level of like catastrophe would have to happen to really force a panic uh your building falls down that would be pretty disruptive for you i mean i've been disrupted but what would happen my building falls down you what i'm gonna lose all my you, stuff no no you'd what, have to move with your parents i'm moving with my parents yeah like, we, you'd, you'd we probably just, you'd probably lose a day you'd probably be delayed by a day we keep building maybe, man maybe an afternoon <laughs> I'll make videos. I'll make videos while I'm moving. Like we just keep building. You just keep building. This stuff happens. Like if you want to be an entrepreneur, you, this is normal. This stuff, this stuff is great. It happens. Like this can't be the definition of you. The fact that you close your business for two months or something can't be the end of you. That doesn't worry me or scare me at all. Yeah. So, but I, I don't know. I'm not working through anything. This is, this is not meh. Hey, hey, so what this should not you hard. be doing then? Like if when I broke hard, my neck, that, that was hard. You, right? If it's not hard, it should scare me. Yeah, that means you're not pushing hard enough, right? Uh, sure. I mean, I, I'm, what am I working on? It's still the same stuff I'm working on. I need to get, I need, I need to get more books sold. I just did my first movement makers. Oh, dude, it was so I much heard, fun. I heard how oh great it was. Oh my God, it was so know, good. Do you want to know the feedback that I have from the inside? Oh, who messaged you? Uh -huh. Wouldn't you like to know? I have spies. Okay. Uh, here's a quote. It was great. Love the energy and the tactics. The follow up is the key. That's what I heard. It was so good. So, so I guess people listening, watching, I have a movement makers program 
where uh, it's a private Facebook group that I go live in twice a month for 85 minutes. And I, I, a week before poll people, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want to learn? And I, I made last night a quick deck a PowerPoint of like what I wanted to go over and, and talk to people with. And we went live today was the first day. And the, the only way to make it better is to have everybody in the room with me. Right. Cause I'm just basically talking into a microphone. I can't even see people like I can see Mark on, on this episode, but it was so good. The energy was so hot. I'm getting so jazzed up talking to people are like, are you going to send me the slides? Cause I'm taking pictures of every slide that comes up. Like, don't worry, man, I'll send you the slides. Don't stress. Yeah, yeah. Once, we once you're in the movement we, makers, you're on the inside. Oh, you're it was on the so inside. So much fun. Right? Anyway. So, so, you know, I need to scale that up. I need to scale. We need to sell more books. We need to sell more bumps. We need to sell more movement makers. I need to, I need to sell more YouTube courses. I haven't, fully figured out the, the massive scale on it yet. So we need, we need, that's, that's the challenge. I mean, speaking is dead right now. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm talking to some agents of people that are successful speakers and they connected me and I got an email back today. It's like, everything is dead. We're reeling. We're just trying to like, okay, great. Like, awesome. I'm not worried about that yet. Mm -hmm. Speaking will focus on whenever, whenever things open up again. Right. I got enough to work on right now. Um, I changed up the Espresso format. So yesterday I, I filmed, cause Tuesday was my book launch day, so I swapped it with filming day. So Wednesday, yesterday was filming day, and I totally changed, I'm not happy with my format. It's, it's, too, it's too old now, we're doing it too, uh, new format. Here, it, boom, and I spent the whole day recording seven videos or something, right? Which normally I, sh I would be able to bang out, but we switched it up. Um, tomorrow I'm, I'm gonna be doing some new stuff on my Instagram. Uh, it's like, it's, it's everything that I'm doing. We got it with now energy, got extra energy, less time for other people asking me for stuff. Great. The, in the Instagram you've peaked on, I'm going to just say like, you've hit your peak. Okay. A few days ago, you posted a cartoon of you climbing a ladder of awesome people. Okay. And that was just the best it could be. Like you will never be able to get anything as good as that one photo of you and me together. You've been in other photos before. I know, but that one was a special. With only special Mark, with only Mark, as opposed to being. But, but the fact that it was a ladder and you're climbing up people <laughs> and, you know, Tony is Robbins is there and he's like helping you up and I'm helping you up. Nina's cheering you on. You basically got your fit, foot like just like right into Bill Gates's face. <laughs> you're, just face. Like, you're just like Christ. standing on them. You're like, you've already climbed over these other people. You're standing like you're like you're like into Bill's face. But then me and Tony Robbins and Nina are up there with you helping you up. That's, that's, that's the peak, the penultimate. Is that a word? Well, penultimum? that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Evan doesn't like it when I do that. Big Lebowski. Anyway. Oh, so, I've never seen that movie. Really? That's why I didn't oh. get that reference. You got to watch it. It's a good movie. Is it? That's just like your opinion, do you, man. Do you watch movies? No, not much. Yeah. Um, I got to watch Moneyball. It's in my queue because I know that oh, that's, that's a good like movie. Entrepreneur, that's a good movie. math, smart yeah, yeah. 101 kind of thing. <laughs> that's a good movie. Moneyball's a good movie. Um, surprisingly, a lot of people's YouTube channels are down. A lot of the thought leadership stuff, almost everybody is down. Because they're all watching Netflix. Everybody is taking a mental vacation. Yeah, or they're watching like news, coronavirus, whatever. It's not down a lot, but everybody's down. Everybody, almost everybody across the board in thought leadership is down, which is surprising because you think everybody's home and people have time. They're going to watch more content, but they're not watching as much thought leadership content. It's not the end of the world. It's not like a massive drop, but I'm like, why are my numbers down? And they're like, oh, everybody's numbers are down. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so I don't know, man. It's just just keep going, keep going. Keep, this is not, if you let this thing define you, it defines you and then you lose. This is, this is starting, you're capable of way more. Go, build, next, move. This is not, this is not, it's not, it's not a, and I have a business massively impacted by it. Move, hustle while you wait, right? Who said that? Edison, hustle while you wait. You're waiting, great, hustle. This isn't gonna be the thing that defines you, right? You know, like what? What? what is Jack, Jack yesterday was like, oh, what if? What? You know, I said, I was like, you're, I'm like, you're 30. I'm turning 37 next week, right? I feel old already. You know, she's she's the same age as me. I was like, in 30 or 40 years, like we're gonna look back at that weird thing that happened a really long time ago. But 
I'm it's not, not like it's not like right now is defining the rest of our lives, right? I mean, it could be if you decide to make a, a powerful, bold statement and move forward. For for the positive, yes, you're right. It could be the it could be the the the, the, the tipping point. Oh, like the culture forward. culture wise, no. No, I'm saying on the negative side that what we're experiencing right now, we probably won't be experiencing in two or three years, right? Yeah, I mean, unless somebody in your family dies or something, I mean, there's, of course. there's serious negative sides to it. But yes. other, otherwise, if it's just you're at home and you don't know if you have a job to go back to or your business is tanking, no, that's not going to define you. Right. Okay. That's it. That's it. Okay, great. Oh, Welcome that's the to the Food Podcast. That's, you started on minimalism. <laughs> we started on minimalism and we finished up in 36 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. What else do you want to talk about? Ever, anything else seems, seems silly because it, it either comes back to the things we've already spoken about. Um, here, let me, let me read this to you. I don't think Louis will care. Louis sent this to our team this afternoon. Ooh, okay. Louis, Louis is Mark CO. Yeah. Friend of the channel. Let me Go finish. Back to... Let me finish reading this before before you react. Okay. Last episode of uh, season two featured yes. Louis. So go back. Uh, and watch second that. last episode. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So Louis sends his email to the team. Here's here's what he says. I'm okay. sitting here in an empty office while I look outside at empty parking lots. Uh, I'm going to home later on an empty bus watching babies in strollers with masks on. Everything feels so empty and desolate, haunting imagery that no doubt we'll, t we'll be telling our children about for generations to come. Personally, it's a lot to deal with at the moment. I can only imagine how you're all feeling right now. Okay, that was depressing. Hold up, I'm about to flip it. What isn't empty, though, is our resolve, our determination, and our hearts. I'm so proud of how everyone is keeping such level heads and dedication to their work, how we're testing our communications processes, how we're collaborating together to continue to drive value for our clients in spite of all that's happening. Sitting here in the emptiness, I feel full of heart because of how you're all proving your commitment. We're going to get through this together as a team because we're forward and passion and next level and resilience and extraordinary and dedication and authenticity and motivation and life and we the North. Those are all our one words in the company. Anyway. Louis sent that note out. And? And what do you think? I don't know. I'm just giving fodder. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Generally, company-wide stuff rarely does anything. Wow. So it's... That's yeah, well, it's true. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. It's, it's within, within understanding who's on your team, what they're going through, and then how can you be... Some people might need their self-insurance. Some people might be really struggling and freaking out and need you to be a leader and tell them it's going to be okay and other people may be totally fine like alex on my team is is so upset that this is happening he wants to run he, he's like in his heart his one words belong in his heart believes that now more than any time is when people need to feel like they belong <laughs> and the best way to do it is through salsa classes which he can't do so he's like we should do a, a shines class where you basically dance by yourself and we'll keep people whatever feet apart like you can't I had to shut them down, right? And me, like I'm, I'm the guy who loves them. I'm like, dude, that we can't do that. We have to shut the school. It's like, no, we can't shut this anyway. So he doesn't need help with that. He's, he's more into it than I am. What he needs help with is Alex, stay on your schedule and your routine and get stuff done in this time because everybody's slacking off and it's dragging you down. You need to inspire them to lift up. Um, Jeremy, who does the YouTube business with me, He's like, he's a hermit too. Anyway, he's sitting at home. <laughs> he only comes in once a week to meet me and then he just stays home. He doesn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, he works from home. It's me. Same thing. He joined me on my live stream yesterday for League I of saw. Legends and coaching. It's just, he's just in his no room. one has a hundred percent win weight like I do yet. Win weight. I like a it. win weight, a win rate. Although he's five and one. That's pretty epic. He's got the most wins. It's going to be hard to catch. Anyway, um, Nina doesn't, you know, really care so nobody on my team i even posted to the facebook group I we have a facebook it. group internally oh yeah you're in there it's like I hey have... how's everybody doing something like that uh we all work from home anyway just checking in see how people are doing share your stories and everybody's nobody's like freaking out it's like okay if somebody on my team was really freaking out then it'd be reaching out to them and saying hey like tell me your story what's going on just easing their concerns letting understanding what's happening in, in their city or country or whatever um 
everybody seems to be okay. So great. I'm not going to send this giant company message out. Well, I liked Louie's message because I wouldn't have thought to do that. So it's great. He's, he's proud. Better. He's, proud of, he's proud of the team. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm better. Is it better is like sharing wins of what's happening and reaching out to people individually, even to say, Hey, how are you doing with this? Oh, yeah. whole... That's all week, all week that's been happening. Yeah. So. That's, that's going to have a way bigger impact than just sending a mass email to everybody in the company. Yeah. So good. So this is the thing with Evan. He's just doing what he's doing. Nothing changes. Nothing rattles him. Uh, nothing, not, nothing really extraordinary to talk about. That you might launch the to- book. How do? How is this not about book launch and and getting the built that's to serve out? Dude, you don't. That's backwards. You don't look backwards. You look forwards. Do you really want to talk about what happened on All Tuesday? Right. No, I don't. I don't care. I don't care about. <laughs> I, I'm. I show up with whatever whatever topic you want to talk about. So we're going to talk about. Yeah. Today's, today's I mean, Thursday. Book came out on Tuesday. Today's been all day. And you know what? I'm in, I'm in book mode because I'm t- it's all day interviews and podcasts and hangout. Thursday is my all day public hat day, right? So okay. I, I have a question for you. Evan, what's your favorite story from the book? Oh my God, Mark. I asked yeah, you this Jesus the other Christ. day and you wouldn't answer it, but I literally am curious. Out of all the entrepreneurs, you talk about Tony Robbins, you talk about Oprah, you talk about Mary Kay, you talk about Mad, you talk about uh, lots of people. Lots of people. I literally asked that to you, not because I was setting you up as like Mr. Hostmark. I, what, what's your favorite story from the book and why? My wife's, because it's personal. Your wife's, the ninja? Mm-hmm. One of the exercises, so I created this exercise called the passion process. Um, and, it's, and it's helpful for anybody who reads the book, but I designed it all around Nina mm-hmm. because we were driving back from Boston. Oh, yeah. I was saying New Hampshire, but it's Massachusetts. We're, we're driving back from Boston and she didn't know what she, what she wanted to do. She figured out that she liked her one word was care, but didn't know what was next. And like, what do you mean? You don't know what's next. This is just, you just do this. And she didn't know what to do. It's like, okay, great. So, so I told her this, a, this is a eight hour, nine hour drive, something like that. And so I told her, okay, we're still four hours away from Toronto. Make a list of all the things that we've enjoyed helping people. You enjoyed the, you enjoy, you helped somebody like you enjoyed it. You enjoyed helping them. Great. Then underline the ones where you actually enjoyed the process of it and not just the result. Mm. And then circle the top three of the ones that you would want to be doing more of and spending more time doing. Cause she'll do things like I helped my brother with his accounting or something. And she enjoys helping the brother, but she doesn't enjoy doing the accounting. And so that actually has been a really valuable process for people when they go through it, the recognizing why they're doing it, that they're built to serve, they love helping, and they are doing a lot of stuff that they enjoy the result of, but not the actual process of doing. I built a whole business that, around it. <laughs> and, then, and, and it's wrong. Like you're not, you're not, you're not going to be great at it. You're not going to enjoy it. You have these fleeting moments of excitement when you get a result as opposed to every day showing up and enjoying what you're doing and living a purposeful life and creating in some cases for the entrepreneurs, a purposeful business. Mm -hmm. So that whole thing, that whole exercise that became, I talked about it today in my movement makers program, that whole exercise has only came because of helping Nina through the process. Um, So yeah, it's good. It's helped a lot of people ever since. That's awesome. See, that's what I wanted to know the answer to. Well, you've, Mr. Evan. Kind of, you've kind of built a reputation of, Please. of throwing out questions. Please go back. Go back to what? To the beginning of season one first, when I did that uh, like for the first few episodes and no. then finally said, no, Mark, only bring me questions you care about. We made a transition in season two. Season no, two no, 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 still started with. It was April. It was, it was April. Of there's still, so there's still the lingering doubt of is Mark actually asking this because it's a real question or he's just being Mr. Interview Man. You like that? Hold on. I want, I want to come up with some Mr. Interview Man questions just off the top of my head. <laughs> Not, real happening. Quick. Not happening. But look, look at how much you've already grown that you can't immediately access that, which used to be your <laughs> default, right? Hello. Yeah, well, if I had the, yeah, if I had a, the book, I would circle some stuff and I'd be like, um, you know, on page 72, Evan, you talk about uh, finding your purpose. And I think that's quite interesting. Can you tell me how is it that you came to blah, 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 blah. That's the it's kind of so funny how much people have, have, uh, 
like fully digest. So I've been doing interviews and calls all day and, and some people are so deep into my stuff and are talking about moments that I've talked about like once or twice and others are just, it's, it's, so tell me about your book and like, haven't done that much research. It's super interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's, I, I, I think that it's like when, you know, you go to a concert, not you listeners, Evan doesn't go to concerts. When you go to a concert yeah, and, and concerts. it's one of your favorite artists and they say like, Hey, you know, any requests, right. If you want them to shout up requests or I, I like Ben folds. He like does this paper airplane tour where you write requests on paper airplanes and everyone throws them in at the same time. He picks 10 random songs and you'll play them. That's cool. I like it's, that. It's, it's super cool because then it's like totally random. There's like 500 ones up there. But part of you wants to like, part of me wants to put on the song that I love. Part of me wants it to be a really deep cut just to show how hardcore I am okay. about, about knowing their back catalog. Okay. When I interview people, if I really, really like, if I really want to care, like if I really care, I will try and consume like a ton of stuff and ask the question that hasn't been asked or those things. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I also try to pick out that little detail just so that way they're like, Oh, okay. Oh, they know. Wow. They this person work. actually knows me. Okay. They did, their, they did their work. They did their homework. And I've gotten that sometimes from people because you know, if, if you're interviewing someone who gets interviewed all the time, like, and I want to prepare for it, I will have a researcher spend like eight or 10 or 12 hours researching and then I'll read everything and then I'll circle things. And then they're like, Oh, wow. Okay. Huh, you, you actually did your homework and it shifts the conversation. <laughs> Aren't you more excited to talk to the people who bring out that little thing that you, you know, that shows yeah, yeah, yeah. you that they know you than like, so tell me about built to serve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or people who watch like, man, you made that top 10 video on some like, and you don't even remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, I don't remember. And two, <laughs> like nobody talks about that one video, right? Like, the Henry Rollins top 10 is this one guy who's in the YouTube I don't even, community. I don't even know who that is. He's, he's a, I think he's a drummer. He's a drummer. Okay. Uh, anyway, like maybe he's not a drummer. I mean, people can flame me for not knowing Henry Rollins. We did one top 10 on Henry Rollins and, and he's a, he's got a great message. Um, but it's, it's not the most special, like wouldn't be in my top uh, anything of the videos but it's like this is the video that he loves and he loves Henry Rollins and like to hear the motivation coming from him it's like and I love that I love that it can connect with people um, so yeah it's great when they tell those stories if they have some kind of that's why most people suck at their intros because they're just reading out the bio instead of telling me the best intro of all time is just telling me man I discovered you through Henry Rollins top 10 that you did It'd be a fun exercise for me to interview you as if I didn't know you. No. It wouldn't Why not? Because I do know you. I wouldn't, I couldn't play along. It'd just be too. It'd be too weird? No, nah, it'd just be too uh, inauthentic. It's fake. Don't be fake. I can't handle it. But the, yeah, see, I guess any question that I have for you, I just ask you that question and you, you choose whether you want to answer it or not. Half the but, time you just answer it. The other half the time you go, come on, man. Like Jeremy, the YouTube consultant <laughs> that I work with, right? He, he, he got on. Now he's a crazy reader, voracious reader, like studying everything, personal development, all, like, all the time, nonstop. It's all he does. Sit at home and like read and then do YouTube stuff and help people, which is great. But he found he, he was not liking his life. He was in college for restaurant management or something. Okay. And then wanted to make money. So he, he saw Shark Tank, saw Robert Herjavec. So he typed Robert Herjavec on YouTube, found the top 10 I did on him, loved it, bought Robert Herjavec's book. And then that's opened up the whole thing for him. So now he's learning thing. entrepreneurship. Yeah, so he was telling his story last night. And it's like, it all started with me buying Robert Herjavec's book. Is it Jeremy? No, it all started with you finding. Let's remember how it actually 10. all started. <laughs> so he told the story properly but like that's that's my favorite intro if somebody was going to interview me for their channel it's like hey let me tell you man i got into personal development because i saw a robert herjavec video on your channel that then i bought his book and it blew up my world that's my favorite intro more than evan's got two million subscribers and 300 million views you. and here's, here's my intro ready okay so it's 2007 and I'm 23 years old and i start my business and i sublet it out of uh some guy named max's office and I was really struggling. So Max comes to me and says, Hey, you need to meet my friend, Evan. And the first thing I said is, 
who's Evan? <laughs> so I Google Evan. And then the next thing I said was, are you actually friends with this guy? Like you're actually friends with him or you just know this guy. And then his response, wow. his response literally was, we've gone go-karting together. Does that count? And I went, I guess that you're friends. I don't know. Wow. Wow. And then, the disrespect. And then I, from and then Max, I met Evan. Okay. And then from Max or from me? <laughs> Saying, are you really? From friends? you to Max. That oh, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, it's incredulous that he could actually be friends with someone of such high stature. You don't believe uh, him? No, it's because the way, he, no, it's because I thought they were like, you guys were like business friends or work friends, but he right, made it sound okay. like you guys were like really, really good Homies. friends. Homies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then the first time I met Evan was uh, outside of a building as we went to listen to Frank, uh, whatever his last name is, mm. talk. Chun Chuli. And, and it was a, a really, really hot, like June or July day. I had to park two blocks away because there was no parking and I had to carry all the camera gear and I only needed one trip. So I had camera bag, tripod. I, I didn't have carts back then. Lighting, extension cables, and I'm walking in like the summer heat. And then you're like, you like rock up with your coffee or whatever. And you're like, hey, you want some help? And I'm like, no, 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 man, I got it. It's okay. It's cool. I got it all. And I wouldn't let you carry anything. Okay. <laughs> that was it. First time I met you. I don't remember that at all. Awesome. You don't, you don't have to remember any of that stuff. I was, I was very intimidated by you, Evan. Great. This, this guy who could totally change my life by uh, getting me into his mastermind group. Yeah. That, that honestly, I was too early and had no business being a part of. Here he is, Mark and Drager. All these years later, here all I am. All these years later. All because Max's friend, Evan. <laughs> went go-karting. Went, yeah, they went go-karting at some point. We, Do you remember go going go-karting even or no? No. <laughs> there you go. I remember Frank Chanchuli. I remember that. that uh, That's his name. That's yeah, his I remember name. Frank from Wish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was Enunciate at the time. Yes. That company. But he's now started. He's, he's in charge of Wish. Um, does recruiting, does tele telecom stuff. Um, yeah, Anansi, so, yeah. I yeah, remember I like, he said the greatest thing, that he felt like that he was um, an artist, but that he, he can't paint and he doesn't use painting as his tool, he uses businesses as his tool, but he feels like an artist. And that always stuck with me. I thought that was really cool. I like it. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, Evan, that's how I met you. That's where it started way before top tens or books or anything else. That's it. Season that's three, it. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Season three. Remember, in this time, it's an opportunity. And I don't think you really need all the crap you have in your life. So get rid of it. If you want to know why the distractions in your life are just an excuse, check out last week's episode. The link is right there next to us. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe. We'll see you there.